Cycling and Cycling D3 exert antagonistic roles in beta, B, beta cell survival in autoimmune diabetes and will be presented by Conchi Mora from Universitat de Lleida. So, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to share with you the results. The results we got in the role of CDK11 in the induction of type 1 diabetes. As most of you know, uh, type 1 diabetes is caused by the autoimmune destruction of beta cells in the, in the pancreas. And uh, this chronic hyperglycemia leads to severe uh, complications, vascular complications. And actually in Europe, is getting the dimensions of epidemics. Like every year, like three to 4%, and there is a three to 4% increase in the incidence of this disease. So we have two uh, genetic components. Most of the focus has been put on the immune system, in which several um, associations like HGLA and uh, abnormal thymic expression of autoantigen, et cetera, is, is a focus on. But there is also very important um, genetic composition or in the target tissue. Has been also described that in the pancreas there is abnormal expression of chemokines, abnormal retrieval of apoptotic uh, cell uh, death, dead cell, sorry. So we have two components. We have like a blind immune system unable to distinguish between self and non-self, but also a target tissue that is making a call effect telling uh, to the immune system to be, uh, to be destroyed. So. According to the Essenbart model about type 1 diabetes, there is a silent phase. I don't know if this. There is a silent phase in which there is no symptom of the disease. Afterwards, there is a triggering effect at the beginning, like could be an infection, could be an inflammatory stimuli that uh, triggers the starting point of beta cell destruction until the end where most of the cell death or most of the uh, beta cell are death. So um, what happens is that you don't have insulin production and then you have hyperglycemia. So our goal is to discover, is to identify those genes in beta cells that are differentially regulated due to inflammation during the course of the evolution of this, um, of this inflammation. And we, of course, use the end of the model that uh, we are very familiar with. They develop spontaneous type 1 diabetes. And there is also a black box between the initiation of inflammation at three weeks of age, where there is a, a shift in the diet. The mice is weaned, stops um, cycling milk, and starts with a carbohydrate diet up to uh, 12 weeks of age when uh, the first cases of diabetes are diagnosed in females. So in this black box that every time is less black and is more gray, many more genes are discovered in which beta cells um, start to um, experience very deep molecular changes in beta cell gene expression. Some of the genes have already been described, like fast subregulation of beta cells, and also the perforin destruction by CD80 cells and all the other mechanisms. But there are also another additional um, uh, gen, um, sorry, uh, differential gene expression that have not been described. I wish, and we want to discover these genes. So we, our goal was to identify these genes, and we uh, had this experimental design in which we compare NOD mice whose eyelids are exposed to inflammation, and uh, as a control, not skid mice, which are deficient in T cells and B cells, I don't experience eyelid inflammation or also called insulitis. So we extract RNA from both um, samples, experimental samples, and then we do RDA, which is obstruction to enrich in a skid and a not a specific RNAs and do micro studies and came up with a list of differentially expressed genes. And from this list, we pick up two of them, cycling D3 and CDK11, because both of them are related to cell cycle. And uh, CDK11 concretely is participating in the M phase, in the mitosis phase of cell cycle, and cycling D3 makes progress from G1 to S in both, uh, in beta cells. 
Why we pick up these two genes? Because at the end of this progression of the disease, according to the Eisenbach model, there is a honeymoon phase in which the um, individual has hyperglycemia, but there is still some remnant insulin production because there is still some beta cell mass left. So in this phase, have been described as beta cells enhance their proliferation to overcome autoimmunity and also regulatory T cells trying to calm down the autoimmunity. So we thought that CDK11 and cyclin D3 being related to cell cycle would be a good candidates as a possible targets in uh, therapy. A cycling D3, we want, I won't talk about that because we already described that cycling D3 has been, uh, uh, is very important for beta cell survival in a cell cycle independent uh, mechanism. But I'm going to talk about CDK11. CDK11 um, is cycling independent kinase and has two isoforms coming or deriving from the same uh, messenger. And the um, messenger can mature in different, in two different isoforms. Along all the cell cycle, the first isoform, which is CDK11 P130 mice or P100 in human, is involved in maturation of mRNA, okay? And the ligands are L1 and L2 cyclins, and it's also always expressed in the nuclei. But CDK11 P58, which is generated by a differential uh, ribosomal entry in the messenger, is only expressed during mitosis and has been related also to apoptosis. And curiously, one of these ligands or ligand cyclins is cyclin D3, the one that is also then regulated by inflammation. So our question was, is CDK11 done regulation by inflammation related causally to the onset of diabetes? First of all, we wanted to validate the microarray studies and we did uh, real-time PCR in samples from uh, messenger RNA from not and not skid mice. And also, we mimic um, inflammation studies into not skid. Here, we get uh, not skid mice and not mice, and then we isolate islet cells, endocrine islet cells, we were CDK, uh, CD45 negative to exclude hematopoietic component, isolate RNA and do RT-PCR, and then we confirm the results of uh, microarray in which NOD express differentially uh, much less CDK11. But this was not correlated with changes in proliferation of beta cell, as we did while uh, staining for KE67. Also, we, uh, by adopted transfer of um, diabetogenic splenocytes, uh, increasing amounts uh, from saline to 1 million, 3 million, 5, 10 million into not skid mice, allowed two weeks to home the, uh, the lymphocytes into the islets and then extract the islets and then do um, quantitative expression of CDK11, we saw that there is a negative correlation, a significant negative correlation between the level of inflammation and the expression of CDK11. So we can conclude that CDK11 is then regulated by inflammation. Then, how can we relate the dam regulation of CDK11 with the onset of diabetes? We did in vivo studies in which we uh, obtained NOD mice uh, that was hemideficient for CDK11. The mutation, the homodeficiency in CDK11 is embryonically lethal, so we can only work with hemideficient mice. And then we use as a readout the onset of diabetes, uh, inflammation, insulitis, uh, apoptotic studies like tunnel, sub G1, etc. Here we can see that hemideficient mice, we can see in the uh, round, uh, white round uh, symbols, the incidence is significantly lower in, the C in CDK11 hemideficient mice compared to wild type. And also, when we look in the uh, insulitis score, in CDK11 hemideficient is lower. Bear in mind, this is hemideficient, not holodeficient. We would expect higher effect, more dramatic effect, in the, if the deficiency was complete. But again, we don't see differences in the replication rates, which means there are different roles related in between apoptosis and uh, replication. We also thought maybe this difference in the incidence is due to uh, um, affection in the autoimmune repertoire. Maybe the um, 
the diabetogenic capacity of uh, CDK11 mutated lymphocytes is lower. So we analyze in pancreatic lymph nodes and infiltrate, islet infiltrated lymphocytes, the frequency that uh, or in CD40 cells and CD80 cells of activated markers and also the frequency of regulatory uh, FOXP3 positive cells. And there were no differences. We also check for the diabetogenic capacity by adoptive transfer of lymphocytes from either wild type or hemideficient CDK11 mice, and there were no difference. So the protection of diabetes in the CDK11 hemideficient mice is not due to an affection in the autoimmune repertoire, but an alteration in the target tissue. As we saw in the next uh, slide, when we compare in vivo, doing tunnel staining of uh, pancreatic beta cells, there is a much higher frequency of uh, apoptotic events in the wild type mice compared to hemideficient. But this has to be done in the presence of inflammation because when we use the not skid background, no differences. Uh, noticed. Also, we did ex vivo culture of uh, islets exposed to a pro-inflammatory cocktail of cytokines, interferon gamma, interleukin beta, and TNF alpha, and different concentration of glucose, because we know that glucose, uh, hyperglycemia, can provoke um, also apoptosis. And we see that the levels of apoptotic events are higher in the wild-type mice compared to hemideficient. So, we can conclude that CDK11 provokes apoptosis in a way that is depending on inflammation. But then how we conciliate the role of cycling D3, which is a natural partner of CDK11 P58, with the antagonic role of CDK11 provoking apoptosis. We uh, try to answer this question in which we cross cycling, def cycling D3 deficient mice, which has exacerbated diabetes with uh, CDK11 hemideficient mice and check for the incidence of diabetes. And uh, what we saw here on the left-hand side, you just have the cycling D3 knockout mice and the upper curve is the incidence of diabetes in the knockout mice, which is much higher and also starts much earlier than wild type mice. When we cross these mice with the um, hemideficiency of CDK11, you see there is no difference if you have CDK11 or not. What prevails is the deficiency of cycling D3, which means that cycling D3 very probably is downstream in signaling of CDK11. And we hypothesize that cycling D3 would be a negative regulator of CDK11 in promoting apoptosis, CDK11 P58. But this needs to further be studied. So uh, our conclusion is that CDK11 promotes cytokine-induced apoptosis of beta cells. And the downregulation we observe prior to diabetes could be a protective mechanism that beta cell exerts in order to at least delay the onset of the disease. And that cycling D3 could be a negative regulator of CDK11 P58. I would like to thank, first of all, to mice, because uh, with them we cannot do anything, and uh, to Esther Sala, which devoted her PhD thesis to this work, and also here you have Esther, Ancelia, Julia, Upashana, and Alejandra, who did most of this work, and the rest of the people in the lab, and also especially to Jill Lati, because she provided the mice, and she's no longer with us, unfortunately, but she was a very nice collaborator, and uh, thank you all for your attention, and I will be very happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Uh, is there any question in the public? Yes, uh, I would ask you something if I had understand half of you what you say. But I got a little confused about okay. about the, the, you are trying to find something in the non mice which uh, facilitates the diabetes. Oh, well, that stops whatever it is. But you cross that with uh, some uh, 
so not a skid mice, which obviously there is no, no it's either a skid, it doesn't work. So I don't understand how, I mean, it's not, the difference wouldn't be for the, for, for the not background, but for the skid background. What, that, 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 I, I don't know. So yeah, <laughs> uh, actually yeah, because where the one we use is not skid, so it's the NLD background with just a skid mutation. Okay. It's not the plain skid, but not skid. So I, I, I apologize if I didn't make that clear. It's not versus not a skid. So the only difference yeah. is that there is in not a skid do not develop insulitis, not diabetes. So we extract the samples from that. And then we do subtraction and see which genes are differentially expressed in NOD, or they can be upregulated, downregulated, whatever it is. But it's not uh, the only difference is the skin mutation. The rest, the rest of genes is NOD. Yeah, that's why when you do the, the, the not the, the, the subtraction, mm -hmm. you would find things related to the skin mutation, not the no. No, well, the well, skip, well, you no, mean no, it, it related to the absence, yeah, yeah, to the yeah. absence of lymphocytes, because we focus in that are in that organism, yeah, yeah. yeah, the islets, nothing else, and we complement, we validate the results with doing all these studies with uh, infiltration and cytokines or whatever. Thanks, but my lack of understanding. No, no, sorry, I didn't understand. So. Uh,